unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. In the land of the living. Everybody say in the land of the living. Say it again. You have to know if you've experienced his faithfulness, something, something is so rich on the inside of you to know that he is real in you. Can I have a big amen? Say he is faithful. Amen. You may be seated. Great job, guys. Amen. I want, I want to start something that will tear you up the next couple of probably let's put one month I want to talk about the realms and the realities of the new creation are you ready yes. say to your neighbor I am supernatural, I am supernatural. say it again say I am supernatural. I am supernatural you know one of the things that has happened is when we talk to people I've come to find out not a lot of people that call themselves Christians or Christian understand the dimension of the supernatural. What we have sometimes is what we call Christian philosophers. The Bible declares in John chapter 1, it says, The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. That word truth is reality. Everybody say reality. Say it one more time. So a lot of time you find people tell you, I have my truth. I've heard that before. There is nothing like your truth. There's truth. The thing they're talking about is experience. Experience is not the truth. If it were the truth, everybody would have the same. So if somebody is experiencing defeat, that's not the truth. That's an experience. That's a fact. But the truth never changes. If it changes, it can never be the truth. So we live in the world today where you have people that are philosophers. And so what is philosophy? Today you have a lot, a lot of philosophies. And uh, from philosophy, they build ideologies. So when you're talking to some Christians, they don't even believe in the reality of the new creation. Am I telling the truth? So their experience, they have used the experience to replace the word of God. Because they have not experienced the realities of the word of God, they become philosophers. Some ministers, they start out in miracles. And then as life goes on, they live longer. And then maybe somebody doesn't get healed or something happens. And all of a sudden, their ministry that started in a blaze of glory, all of a sudden ends up, they start writing books. And they start writing, telling stories of how it used to be five years ago or a hundred years ago. And it ends up becoming a, a thing of philosophy. They become philosophers. They start in fire, end up as philosophers. To justify why some things do not happen. Am I telling the truth? When they started out, they believed that anything was possible. Life happens. And then they change their they, change, they want to change the word of God to fit their tragedy. It's a common thing. And they, this is the argument, but it doesn't work for everybody. Or they tell you, 
Well, what about the son so that die? But he was a great man of God. I don't care how great a man or woman of God you are. The word of God is truth. You don't change the word of God to fit your tragedy. You change your tragedy to fit the word of God. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2. If we can put the scriptures up tonight because it's a new day. Are you hearing me? Something good is going to happen to you tonight. You are going to be changed. You're going to be transformed tonight. If you believe that, say amen. So I find out a lot of times when we talk to people, well-meaning people, they want to tell you what they think God said. Let's start from verse 1. I want to show you how Paul looked at this. Paul said, And I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determine not to know anything among you except Jesus and him crucified. I don't want to know about your experiences. Don't tell me what used to happen, how you used to be a drug addict. I'm not interested in that. We all know we have history. But I want to know the realities of Christ in you now. I don't want to tell you anything about my past. I want to tell about the now realities. Because everyone's got a story to tell. But doesn't mean because you had that story, it should apply to me. We have a common denominator, which is the Christ life. I've talked about this before. You have the Christian experience and the experience of a Christian. What's the difference? The experience of a Christian is what each believer would go through based on, write this down, their revelation of Jesus. So you experience different things based on the revelation you have. Some people don't believe that he is their healer. So they get born again and they love Jesus, but they're still staying sick. That is their experience. Now, are we discounting their experience? No. We're not saying they're not experiencing it, but the lack of the revelation you have a different revelation you enter a new dimension it's very simple if you knew if for example you live in a village you don't know anything about an airplane you just content walking around then one day you saw something flying in the air and somebody told you you, know, you asked what's that and somebody says that's an airplane you say what is an airplane you begin, they begin to explain that to you people are really in that thing they fly across the world. World? What is a world? I know you're asking those questions because you don't know. And guess what? Revelation comes in, and all of a sudden there is a hunger in you to travel, to experience because of exposure. You have a new revelation. Wow. People fly in that thing. Can you imagine the first time you flew in the airplane also? The thought that went through your mind? Wow, what an experience. You guys know the experience, right? Some people were chewing gum fast. <laughs> because they were told that their ears will pop. Go. <laughs> Am I correct? They tell all kinds of things. huh? It's quite interesting. You know, that people, the plane starts rolling down the, you know, the, 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 the runway and it's going and all of a sudden, People are holding so firm to the seat as if the seat is not part of the airplane. <laughs> Am I right? What happens is it going like the holding, you don't let go. You say swallow your saliva. Mm. <laughs> but they learn something. There is something available, and because there's something available, what do you do? 
you have a desire for it. Does that make sense? So, the experience you have is based on the revelation you have. If you don't know, you have no desire. So, the Bible says, whatsoever you desire, for you to desire, you must have the knowledge. You cannot have desire without knowledge. You cannot have a desire to, to eat ice cream if you don't know how, how ice cream really is. The purpose of a taste is to acquire desire. Taste and see. When you see, you build a desire that the Lord is good. So when you taste, oh, he's good. So if there is, you taste the desire, and you taste and you have a desire, you have knowledge, desire. If you desire, you want more. Am I correct? Am I correct? So now we're talking about understanding the Christian experience and the experience of a Christian. Two different things. So the experience of the Christian is based on the revelation of the Christ life in them. But the Christian experience, the first part is the experience of a Christian. Now, the Christian experience is the Christ experience in you based on who he really is in you. So, you have a revelation of him. That's one side of the coin. Then, you manifest that revelation in your life. That's what the world sees, the manifestation. The revelation of Jesus in a human form. Are you with me? Are you with me? So, a lot of times we see people and what they do is they tell you what they have been through. And when they tell me what they've been through, most times, and I didn't say all the time, when they tell you is for you to sympathize with them. I don't want to sympathize with you. I want to set you free. That's what I'm anointed to do. So you tell me your story, I give you the word. When you get the revelation, you change the story. See how that works? You pray to God. What do you think? I, I, when I hear people talk about prayer sometimes, I just smile because they say, we need to pray to God. See, what is the purpose of prayer? When you pray to God, the purpose of prayer is to know what he wants. When you know, you act. So why are you praying? To know. So when you know, you don't need to pray. You just act on the knowledge. When you ask God for something, how does he respond? He doesn't give you stuff. He gives you his word. When you obey that word, you get the stuff. It's not rocket science. But this is the mentality in church. We pray to God and we wait for him to give us stuff. I've never seen that in the Bible. Never. God does not give you stuff. He gives you his word. When you obey the word, the stuff appears. Because the substance of that stuff is the word. Can I say it one more time? He created all things by his word. So when you act on the word, you are putting creation into motion. I let the thing sink in. Can somebody say amen? When God said to the man, when Jesus said to the man with the withered hand, stretch forth your hand. He didn't stretch the man's hand. He gave him words. When the man stretched forth his hand, that hand became healed. Why? What did I say to you? When you put the word in action, what do you do? You create what the word says. Why is it that people that pray a lot for money never get it? Because they don't act on what God has said.
So, is this helping you guys? Because I told you this Wisdom Wednesday. Hallelujah. This is the night for meat. I want to make sure you're getting deep into the word. You understand what this word of God is saying. And then you can move every day with victory. Let me tell you, victory is not occasional. Victory is every moment. The Bible tells us he causes us to triumph always. Not sometimes. Now for you to be triumphant always, it means it's not just in your action, it's in your thinking. You must, get, you must have victory in your mind. You must have solutions on your mind. You must have, so as a man think it, so is he. So the mind must be conditioned to a particular or set to a particular frequency so that whenever you're moving, you are moving in the direction of that frequency. In other words, I said the mind must be set or conditioned. How do you set the mind? There must be a thing that you use to set the mind. See, the mind is not the focus. There is another dimension called spirit. The spirit should become the thermostat that you use to set the temperature or the dimension of the mind. But most people never use that. That's why they allow all kinds of things. They're blown away by every wind of doctrine. Because they're not anchored in the spirit. Are you hearing me? Is this helping you? So the experience of a Christian. When I hear people tell me, well, this is my experience. I always smile. And they're talking to me. They go, um, well, you know, we pray to God. And this happened. And we pray to, oh, if you have seen what happened. And I'm going like this. Um. You're making it too hard. They look at me like, but you don't understand. It's easy for you. It's easy because I just found out how he does it. It will be easy if you know how he does it. Not how you do it. It's like you're trying to get into the house, but you have a combination lock. And it's pouring rain outside. And you run quickly and push buttons. Nothing is working. I want you to zoom out slightly. Because I want to see them see me on the keyboard here. <laughs> okay, that's better. <laughs> now, this is what happens now. You are there trying to push buttons. Nothing happens. And then the person that knows how to do it just comes and goes, boop, 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 boop. Door open. They have the code. You have no code. But you were sincere. That's a problem with a lot of people. Being sincere does not mean you're right. Have you ever seen? But not everybody you begin to want to have a conversation. You don't throw your treasures to swine or people that cannot value what you're giving them it's a waste of energy save yourself energy because you are going somewhere you need to save your energy some some somebody said to me but you have to love them yes you can love them that's that has nothing to do with love you see when you love them you correct them love is very corrective and correction is not rejection can I have a big amen? When I correct you, it's because I believe there is something in you worth saving. I don't want to destroy you. There is something I see in you that is worth saving. That's why I give you a course correction. I tell her, hey, can do this. You're built for more. The way you're acting is not up to your standard. Your focus is broken. Get back on track. That's correction. Amen? It's not look at you, you're useless. That's not correction. That's Africa, right? You've used nonsense, stupid fool. How did it say? 
you idiot how did I say what coconut head <laughs> oh no that's I don't know how to say that one <laughs> it sounds like load what okay for the Nigerians this is a load though I don't know <laughs> this is getting deep <laughs> okay let's be nice now <laughs> Oh my goodness you guys behave yourself you see how they start trouble in church you see them they're acting all sweet and nice mm -hmm. they start trouble in the background I know you people I'm watching you now let's get back to the word you see you never allow people to talk to you that do not understand what you carry. Don't waste your energy on them. So I'm talking about understanding the realms and the reality, the realities of the new creation. You like the topic, right? See, when you walk in a place, something should be evident that you are not ordinary. I'm not saying this like we Christians like, well, I'm really saved. I'm a Christian. That's not what I'm talking about. You should just walk in and people can notice something about you. It is definitely different. It has nothing to do with whether you go to church or not. It has to do who, with who you really are. Can you imagine if supposing somebody walks in here with, with uh, antennas on his head? What would you think? Do, 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 do. You're thinking Twilight Zone. Aliens have landed, right? You don't need to be explained to what that person is with antennas. He just come and said, "How did they do that thing? I don't know." You know, some of you, some of you are experts at that. Peace. I come in peace. You, some people be running out of church. <laughs> That's when I find out who's really saved. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? You know, some Christians talk a lot of talk until there's action on the ground. <laughs> they'll be speaking in, not Arabic, they'll be speaking in English tongues, swearing and cursing and running away. <laughs> okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We keep reading verse 3 now. I'm going to get down there because I want to show you some things that there is a remarkable difference between vain philosophies and the word of God. Can somebody say amen? He said, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Let's keep reading. Hear this now. And my speech and my preaching was not with the enticing Everybody say enticing. Now, that word enticing is the same word you use for, um, how are you saying? When you're drawn by lust. When somebody's baiting you, seducing you. They're seducing you so that when they start seducing you, what is the effect of seduction? You are bewitched. When you are bewitched, you start acting out of character. That is the purpose of seduction, the purpose of enticing. The Bible says in James, it says, when a person is tempted, don't say you're tempted by God, because God cannot be tempted. In other words, you are God. You cannot be tempted. God cannot tempt you either. But you are actually drawn by your own lust, what is drawing you on the other side is enticed. By what? There is, if something is enticing you, somebody must be doing the enticing. You can never be enticed by what you have no desire for. Are you hearing me? See, if you have a desire for power, Satan will know that. If you have a desire for money, 
if you have a desire for fame, if you, those three things, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life, those things, the enemy is, see, Satan, if you understand this, you got him locked down. Three ways he will always get to you. Lust of the eyes, what you see. Lust of the flesh, what your body wants to gain. How you feel, all those things. And then pride of life, what others think of you. What do you want others to think about you? Simple. That's what he did with Adam and Eve. Look at this. It will be good to eat. When you eat, you be like God. Three things, simple. And the Bible says there's three things in order of the Father. The loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, pride of life. The same three ways Satan, the same devil in, in Eden, he did with Jesus. Come and stone to turn to bread. Lust of the flesh. He said, look at all the things I will give you. Lust of the eyes. And then the other thing he said to Jesus was very simple. He says, fall down from the pinnacle of the temple. Because he would give his angels charge over you. Why was that? Because if he fell down, angels would come and swoop him. Get the point? And everybody in the temple would say, oh, he is the son of God. Pride of life. They will see a superman. See, lust of the eyes. He showed him the world in a space of time. That meant he saw 2020. So all the discoveries. He said, this thing I'll give you if you fall down and worship me. See, all three things. Lust of the eyes, he showed him. Lust of the flesh, food to eat. Pride of life, fall down and when the people see you, they know that you are the son of God. Pride of life. If somebody asks you to prove it, they don't qualify to see a proof. But if somebody is sincere about seeing a proof, they can tell you. And they don't say prove it. They will say show me. Prove it means I don't believe. Show me is I am open. Prove it is, okay, I'm coming from a legal point of view. Now, you can prove it, not a problem. But the thing is, even if you raise the dead, they still will not believe in you. They did that to Jesus. He just raised Lazarus from the dead and they're trying to kill him. That goes for a proof. Why? He said, if you leave this man alone, the whole world will come after him. They were more concerned about the uh, cartel business of religion. This guy was messing up their whole deal. Now, let's keep reading that scripture because I want to get a little deeper. I want to really get into it and get some meat out of it. It says, it's not on tossing words of man's wisdom. Man's wisdom. You see, you have to understand the difference between man's wisdom. Where, what is the source of that wisdom? So, not every wisdom comes from God. See, let me correct that. Wisdom comes from God. And then it separates when Satan handles that wisdom, he perverts it. What is supposed to help you begins to hurt you. I'll show you the scripture on that. Are you, are you with me? Are you with me? Is this helping you? Because I expect you guys to be at a high level. Amen? Oh, I can teach you how to be born again. <laughs> Jesse, right? If, they don't, if you can't catch me here, we'll go and talk about be born again, then you can catch me fast. You've got to be a person of the spirit, right? Am I talking to people of the spirit? Amen, amen. I like that. Hallelujah. Now, hear what it says here. It says, but in demonstration of the spirit of and of power. Demonstration. Everybody's a demonstration. For you to demonstrate, it means you have the know-how to do it. You don't demonstrate something you don't know how to operate. 
For you to be able to do that means you have the knowing in you. The knowledge. You become one with that knowledge, you can demonstrate it. Let's keep reading. The reason why is that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Everybody say the power of God. Say the power of God. But today, you find out in the modern church, they want their arguments to be based not on power, but on how wise you can sound. Am I right? So when they're talking, they say, well, oh, this one can really preach. Show me the power. That's the difference. Not words. Don't tell me how fancy a, pers a preacher is. I'm, I keep telling people I'm not a preacher. I'm a proof producer. I demonstrate. Can somebody say amen? I'm a witness. A witness is somebody that can produce the proof. A witness is somebody that can, the purpose of a witness is to remove any doubt. Are you hearing me? The purpose of a witness is, I'm a witness, I have evidence. So you don't have to worry about that. It's the truth. Does that make sense? But in the power of God. Let's keep reading. It gets better. How be it, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect or mature, Yet not the wisdom of the world, because it's telling you there's a difference. Nor of the princes of this world. That means the best and the brightest in the world today. They are operating at a very low level. What you're talking about is so far above. Don't waste your energy with people that can catch you. So when I'm talking to them, I lower myself to their level to tell them I understand you. But can I take you higher and show you something else? Because they are ruled by their five senses. Science is a collection of what the five senses can experience. Anything beyond that, they don't know what it is. And you see, they want to talk about things they cannot quantify. Like love. They don't know what love is. They know feelings, but they don't even know what it is. Why would a healthy person in love start acting crazy? They can make sense out of it. They can't. When they say they're in love, they don't understand that love. They don't understand the dimensions of love. So they just think you love and no. When you're operating in agape, it's so far removed from everything else. Can somebody say amen? When you love people, they get shocked. They look at you like, are you for real? Do people really love like that? It's called sense knowledge. Most people, when you talk to them, they're telling you they know stuff. It's what, what they call sense knowledge. Everybody says sense knowledge. That means sensory. What the five senses put together. A doctor would examine a person and go and say, you have this. Because they can see it. They can feel it. Am I right? They can, they can look at something and say, oh, it's there. But they don't know how it came. Somebody is over there. One day was healthy. And then all of a sudden they start feeling pain. Before they realize it, they go to the doctor. The doctor tells them. Oh, I think you might have. They just say you might have, and the person falls apart. He was strong when they went to the hospital. Few words, few words from a person. You might have. That's all. And they can't even walk anymore after those words. Am I telling the truth? All of a sudden, my God, I have. You're looking at the person, but you walked to the place. You looked healthy. Just a few hours. What did they do to you? They just said, they said what? You might have. And the person falls apart. Words are seeds. Be careful what people plant in your garden. When they start speaking about everybody's doing this, I'm not everybody. 
shut the door. Because they're trying to be like, you know, everybody gets sick. I said, oh, speak for yourself. I don't. They will tell her, but don't you get, no, 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 no. You have no right to plant in this garden. Stay in your own lane. You can speak for yourself, not for me. I do my own seed planting. You shall have what you say. If you're in the everybody's category for sickness, fine. Isn't that funny how religion includes you in the bad stuff? The good stuff, you're not involved. Anyone sick? You. Anyone healed? No, you're not healed. We're all sick. You join the sick people. No, that's religion. Am I right? Listen to religious people. We all get sick, oh God. Stupid. Thank God we're not religious. We are energized with the life of deity, with the life of God pulsating out of every fiber of your being. Your hair falls on somebody and they get healed. You're so charged with God. Can somebody say amen? amen. You don't get into the religious stuff. You're just so full of God, you come to a place. In fact, you touch a key, somebody plays the same keys and nothing happens. You just touch the key, miracles start happening. It's a different dimension of operation. When you start seeing things in this dimension, in this realm, you begin to get different results. But people just, for example, people play keyboard. I played the keyboard in Boston for one hour. Everybody was shocked. After that, I didn't play anything. It was a miracle meeting, 30 days of glory in Boston. And I began to play the keyboard for one hour. And they were singing. Apostle Everton was a witness. Pastor Donna is, is here. She will tell you about that. I played the keyboard for one hour. Miracles everywhere. Everything happening. After that, they said, play keyboard. I said, me? I don't play a keyboard. Just a dimension. Apostle Everton reminds us, man, I've got to remember in Boston, you played the keyboard for one hour. I said, I know. Did I learn about keyboard? No. But I know how to flow. Are you hearing me? Why are you going to be ordinary? You're, there's a guy, there's a young man that used, used to travel with us, Joshua Mills. You know Joshua Mills? Joshua used to be my worship leader, our worship leader. Travel with us. And he is well known around the world. Incredible songwriter. But he said, as a teenager, he didn't know anything about music. He just prayed that God give him, uh, give him uh, music, how to play music. He get, gets on the keyboard, starts flowing, and the rest is history. There is a dimension you can come into where you move and you're getting things. New songs are coming, new sounds are coming, new operations are coming. Why are you going to settle and be like everybody else when there is another dimension available to you? Are you with me? We are moving up. I say we are moving up. You are not ordinary people. Can somebody say hallelujah? I mean, Joshua is known for when he's worshiping or if he's ministering, all of a sudden oils start appearing in people's hands. Or you see diamonds or precious stones start appearing around the place. People's hairs fill with gold. It's amazing. You see, he, 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 people are like this oil pouring out of the hair. Dimensions. If that is available, it's available for you. But you know, we're just like, well, that's not me. That's, no, that's you. That's the dimension I'm talking about. Realms and reality of the new creation. Now, let's keep reading this. Hallelujah. Is this helping anybody? Yes. Now, that comes to nothing. That means when you put the wisdom of the world and the best in the world, Harvard, MIT, Yale, Brown University, all the people, Oxford University, all the top university, when you put their wisdom, is nothing compared to what we carry. Now, keep reading. But we speak the wisdom of God. So there are two kinds of wisdom. 
God's wisdom and the wisdom of this world. It is a mystery. It is a mystery. We speak that in a mystery. That means if it is a mystery, they don't understand. But those that are initiated into the mystery don't know it as a mystery. It's a revelation. It's not a mystery if you know. So to them, it's a mystery. To us, it's lifestyle. They cannot understand how we are operating in this lifestyle. We don't get sick. Everybody gets sick. We don't get sick. And they're going like this. Somebody was asking me, but you're traveling around the world. And you don't, you, you know, you don't get sick, not afraid of COVID. I said, what COVID? I said, my lifestyle before COVID does not change after COVID or during COVID. Why? I deal with bigger things than COVID. We deal with death. What's the end of COVID? It's death. So if I can deal with death, what's the point? You just came into my own world. We healed the sick, cast out devils all the time. Same thing with COVID. Just the same devil. Just a different name. Just the same little devil. And people are like, well, he's killing people. I said, people have been dying for centuries. But Jesus still heals. He has not changed. The word is truth. Can somebody say amen? You don't change because one person died or 10,000 died. The Bible says a thousand shall fall on you, right? And 10,000 years. It shall not come near you. It's, doesn't that sound like what happens? 10,000 will die today. and even, It will not come near you. Why? You're operating by different rules. Why do you think Psalm 91 was written? Because you dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Are you hearing me? It's not something I pray about. It's something I live as a reality. How can you live in that dimension? The realms and reality of the new creation. Sense knowledge. What is philosophy? Now, philosophy is the problem child of sense knowledge. Sense knowledge gave birth to philosophy when it fails to find the reality of life. So if somebody does not get healed, they come up with a philosophy. Well, God does not heal all the time. And this and that. They come. Why? Because there's a failure, they become philosophers to explain the lack of the reality of death being eradicated. Are you with me? Are you catching on? When you come here, you're fire. You see, let me tell you, your brain is not the source of inspiration. Are you hearing me? Can I talk to you tonight? Because they are people with very good brains, but no common sense. Smart people, like Will Smith said, you're the dumbest smart person I've ever met. <laughs> common sense is out of the window. What was that movie again? I, Robot. When it cannot find reality in life, when it fails to find reality in life, what does it do? Sense knowledge says, okay, let's bring a philosophy. Philosophy is just simply a product of refined sense knowledge. <coughs> what is that? Philosophy is like a, 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 an undertaker that is covering the coffin with beautiful flowers. But underneath that coffin is a dead man.
Are you hearing me? It looks nice from the outside. Dig into it. It's not reality. Just dead men's bones. Are you with me? It covers the dead body of sin's knowledge and its failures with beautiful words. This is helping you. So when you hear them come and they blow the in and are telling you, well, this, I just say to them, just be quiet. Sit down there and watch me demonstrate. Pastor Donna will remember this when we were in Kelowna. And that somebody needed to be healed. And they're saying how God is teaching them a lesson to do this, to do that. <laughs> and I was just smiling. That was at West Campbell's church. So we, we, we went there in 1998. We were shaking up everything. I mean, we would shake up, kick the kitchen, kitchen sink and everything, you know. What we do with religion is we don't rock the boat. We just tip the, the rotten thing over. I don't want to rock your boat. I want to kick it over. Nonsense. I don't have time for this. You see, when I go to places, I'm not looking for a repeat invitation to come back. If you invite me back, that's fine. That's not my mission. My mission is to remove what the Father did not plant. Get rid of it. We have a mission. We have a big wall to reach. Stop thinking small. Are you hearing me? We have one mission. The kingdom reigns on earth. Until the kingdom of our God, the kingdom of this world becomes the kingdom of our God and his Christ. We don't stop. For Christ must reign. For Christ must reign. It's not talking about Jesus. You are Christ. Must reign until we make his enemies a footstool. We must reign because we are Christ's body. So we have to reign. Are you hearing me? Until we make the enemies his footstool. And when we have done that, then we can hand our crowns back. You don't lay your crowns down. You rule and reign now. Put on that crown and talk like a king. Can somebody say amen? amen. When, they, when they don't understand you, they're going to criticize you. Stop worrying about that. People are going to say, you, you're so full of yourself. They said that to Jesus. It's normal. Welcome to the club. The club of the extraordinary. Can I have a big Amen. Because they will tell you all kinds of things. Oh, be humble. Real humility is just taking God at his word. False humility is always saying, oh, I'm not, I'm just nothing. That's nonsense. Oh, boy, Satan loves the kind of people. Because you shall have what you say. You're nothing. Then get out of my way if you're nothing. If you're nothing, you have nothing to offer. That means you're irrelevant. But Peter, I love Peter and John. Such as we have, we give to you. They had such boldness. We got something. That's the difference between them and most people. People say, oh, don't look at me, I have nothing. Peter said, look on us. Look on us. We may not have what you're looking for, but we have something that you need. Can somebody say amen? You might not we may not have sympathies for you, but we have results for you. You're looking for sympathies? Don't look at me. You're looking for freedom? We, we have it. Can I have a big Amen. Is this helping you guys? Hallelujah. So what happens? Those nice words of philosophy never gives life. They cannot give love. They cannot give you reality. What we call philosophy is just a swan song of human failures. And they'll come up with a nice cliche. Sometimes you hear some of those quotes... That doesn't make sense. They just say it. What will be, will be. Que sera, sera. What will be, will be. Who says so? What will be, if you don't like it, change it. Ask Jesus about that. Can I have a big amen? How many times did he see dead people and said, what would, what would be, will be? No, he said, get up. Don't invite Jesus to your funeral if you like funerals. He's going to mess it up for you. He hated funerals. His own too. Three days later, he came out. It's like, I had enough. You've got to know the difference. Are you hearing me? If you like funerals, don't invite me. Are you hearing me? 
Somebody said, supposing you raise them from the dead and they don't get raised, look for the next one and do it again. You don't stop because one doesn't get raised. Keep going and the more you go like that, the bolder you are, the more the demons will clear out. The disciples had failures. They couldn't heal a boy. They didn't quit their ministry and say, oh, Jesus, it doesn't work. Jesus came and fixed the problem. Why couldn't we heal this boy? Isn't that true? Did they say, oh, well, Jesus, you know, we didn't heal the boy, you know. It's not for us, you know, we're not really anointed like you. Because you weren't there, the anointing was not flowing. In Africa, they talk about grace. Am I right? He says, I'm tapping. We always tapping. <laughs> Africans are tappers. Too much palm wine. I'm tapping. Let me tap. Hey, tap. What's tap, 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 tap? I'm tapping. Let me tap. I want to tap into that grace. I don't tap into grace. I have received abundance of grace. I'm not a tapper. Tapper, you have to climb that rope and go up and then, oh, I don't have time for that. I'm born in that glory. Can somebody say amen? All those tapping people, I want to tap. Okay. <laughs> I'm tapping. I don't know what you want to do. But some things I hear, you said, I, you, say, you say something like, God is going to, somebody here, God is going to give a million dollars. I tap into that grace. It's called lazy people's faith. Somebody said, somebody's about to get a, a million dollars. I don't even respond. Why? The earth is the Lord and the fullness there. I'm a joint hell in this business. What are you talking about? The world belongs to me. A, a million dollars? It's ours to give. Can somebody say amen? How you see things is how you operate. One sees a million dollars and said, I wish I can have it. Another one sees a million dollars and says, I just want to give it away. It just depends on what side of the equation you are. Become a giver of, of wealth to people. Can somebody say Amen. Is this helping you? Is this helping you? Philosophy is just a blind child of sense knowledge. Why do I say it's blind? It's just like the blind leading the blind. It has never found reality. It has ne philosophies never lead you into reality. You hear them come and blow over you, tell you all kinds of things. I just always smile when they talk like that. If you want reality, it's found in the new creation. Can somebody say amen? Jesus said, I am the way. <coughs> the reality. The life. That word truth is the same word for reality. When the Bible says in John chapter 1, grace and truth came by Jesus. It's talking about the now realities of the new creation. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? And you have psychology. A psychologist once in Harvard, he made the statement he was talking about the subconscious mind. And when he was speaking, he made such an impression on the students on the subject. Just like when we were in college, Pastor Donna will remember this, we were in college, they, they had these uh, core courses you take, you know, and uh, everyone comes and uh, they hear about evolution. That was the indoctrination. So they come and tell you, so this day this professor was wearing this uh, tail coat and everything, you know, with a bow tie, he's looking like Darwin and everything, and he's preaching like he was preaching the gospel, talking about the, the theory of evolution, talking about how man came from this, and that, 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 and he's talking, and the students are listening, and they're believing it. I'm a, well, for me, I already had a PhD, they did not know it. I was a student. So I was listening to them just talk, they have the same qualification as I have, but I was a student there. 
I was studying computer science at that time. And they're talking, and, and so you have the, it's a big class. Everybody shows up for that lecture. And then, then another day of the week, you go to your own different uh, groups to discuss with the professor, different professors. So when we came to the small group, and they wanted us to talk about the lecture and all the things, by the time I got into looking at it from a scientific point of view, the professor that was there said, but, well, it's just a theory, just a theory. I when he started, it was like the gospel. But when I started poking holes on all of the theories, I said, how can you say you come from this and this still exists? If it's evolution, that last state should not be there. This is a missing link. I said, you're still looking, right? How can two things be at the same time if they evolve from each other. It doesn't work that way. If you have monkeys and you have me, I didn't come from them. If it's evolution, that other side would have died. It's called evolving, not reproducing. Am I right? So I was using science. I wasn't talking like a Christian. But you know, people will sit down in class and just take that thing in. Because they don't think. Well, we, go, we have people that go to colleges, to universities now, and they're not taught how to think critically. They're just force fed, told what to think, and regurgitated. When you have an argument with them, they get all offended. Because they cannot think for themselves. Am I telling the truth? Not here. Here you have the mind of Christ. Can I have a big amen? You will sort out anything. Why? You're coming from a higher dimension. We know what they know. And we know what they don't know. What are the realms and reality? So I was talking about this professor of psychology. So he was talking about the psychology, the psychology of orthodoxy, basically how people get religious and things like that. Are you hearing me? This is what it said. The subconscious mind is the abode of everything that is latent. It is the reservoir of everything that passes on recorded or unobserved. The subconscious mind. It contains, this is psychology now, not philosophy, psychology. It says it contains, for example, such things as all momentarily inactive memories and it harbors the springs of all of our obscurely motivated passions, impulses, it's talking about the subconscious mind, likes, dislikes, prejudices, our intentions, hypothesis, fancies, superstitions, persuasions, convictions, and in general, all of our non-rational operations come from it. So he is telling, this is a psychology professor from Harvard, telling the people all the things about, you know, your feelings and all that is coming from your subconscious. So, when you talk to psychologists that they tell you about a subconscious mind, am I telling you the truth? That's their big deal. They make me laugh. <laughs> it says it is a source of our dreams, the subconscious mind, and apparently they may return to that. In it arise whatever mystical experience we may have. He's saying that any experience you have that's mystical is from the subconscious. How wrong can that be? Because they're making you look like it's something when you have an experience, it's from the subconscious, maybe when you're sleeping. No. How about when Jesus appeared to you face to face? That's not, that's not subconscious. That's life and direct. How about raising the dead? It's not subconscious, it's reality. How about the cripple walking? People that have never walked from birth, getting up and walking. How about people with missing parts having new one? That is not subconscious, that is reality. 
And it only can come because there is a different dimension that's not the subconscious. It's called the spirit dimension. Are you hearing me? It's not the mind. Psychology is the study of the mind. But the problems we face are not from the mind. They're spiritual. So if they have to be dealt with, they must be dealt with from the spirit. Are you hearing me? All this chaos and all this, it's from the spirit, not from the mind. It's spiritual. Why would somebody just get triggered when you make a statement? It's demonic. They don't think. They just want to kill you because you mention a name. Am I telling the truth? You say Hitler, no one moves. You say Trump, you see people start convulsing. What kind of demons are this? You say Jesus, they start convulsing. What kind of demons are this? Am I telling the truth? See, Jesus is Lord. Trump isn't. But he even convulsed when you talk about the realities of, of Christ. Am I telling the truth? What would make people act like that? That's not a normal human reaction. It's not even in their minds. It's a spiritual force that has bewitched the people. When you say God, no one is offended. You say Jesus, see demons manifest. They can pray in the name of God. In their public gatherings and everyone is happy. You say in the name of Jesus. You see them like, oh. they start squeezing their face. You're wondering what's going on. The demons know that name. In that public gathering, you say Jesus. What's your reaction of people? Have you ever noticed that? Public gathering. In the name of God. No, God could be dog in, it could be dog in somewhere or it could be snake in India. So I don't know what God you're talking about. Demons know who put them to shame. And his name is Jesus. And some people will tell me, but that's not his name in Hebrew. We know. Charles is Carlos in Spanish. But I don't have to fight over it. I don't speak Spanish, I speak English. I just call it Charles. A Spanish person will call it Carlos. That's fine with me. Jesus is still Jesus. <laughs> Can I have a big amen? Yeah, sure. I'm a Shia. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, hello. You're the first one that ever learned Hebrew. Just move away. Am I telling the truth? You see them argue about me. I'm saying, I say Jesus, demons leave. Am I telling the truth? Don't let people bully you into those things. You are not. You see, they can't bully you. You're a king. You're a queen. When you walk in, you walk with a stride. They know this one cannot be messed with. Let me tell you, they can, they can deal with preachers. They can't mess up with kings. You can arrest a preacher. You, are, you touch a king, you start a war. Jesus never said he was a preacher. <laughs> okay, I'll be nice now. A lot of people don't want to be preachers. I'm not a preacher. I'm a king with a message. Does that make sense? Jesus, when they came to arrest him, he said, come on, Peter, put your sword down. Don't you think I can call 10,000 angels? I can just wipe these guys out. They cannot take me. How many times have they tried to take me in the past? I just walk right in the middle of them. See, this time, I'm just going like a sheep to the slaughter. I am laying my life down. They're not killing me. It's a difference. You can't kill what you can't understand. Are you with me? If you can't see it, you can hack it. We are a new creation. They can't see who we really are. They just see our cover and they think that's us. Are you hearing me? Is this helping you? And this guy goes on to say, it, in it arise whatever my, mis, uh, mystical experience we may have, and our automation, sensory, or motor, our life in hypnotic and you know, hypernoidal um, conditions, if we subject to such conditions, our delusions, fancies, ideas, and hysterical accidents, if we, are his, if we are hysteric subjects, our supra 
normal cognitions if such there be and if we are telepathic subjects. In other words, he is trying to explain all kinds of behavior when somebody begins to convulse or begin to see visions or begin so they're trying to explain how those things come to be are you, are you catching the point i'm just giving you a quick understanding of what the guy is trying to say here telepathy so maybe you you you're getting no 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 we don't do that no we operate differently yesterday evening i was ministering after daily boost i was ministering to a couple i didn't know anything about them but as we got on zoom we started ministering it was too easy they were shocked i just told them everything about their lives they were shocked it's not telepathy is being in that dimension it's a different realm. We live in that realm all the time, 24-7. We just visit this world. Are you hearing me? And so they were listening. I don't know whether they're watching tonight, but they were listening. And they, they were surprised. They said, everything I said was right on. They didn't tell me anything about that. And uh, uh, Carol, uh, Carol didn't tell me anything about what was going on. And she just told me, they just want to talk to you on Zoom. I said, okay. And they were trying to tell me the testament. I just told them, stop. I don't need to know. By this time next year, you're having twins. They were shocked. I said, I didn't say I'm praying for you. I just told you what's, ha what's already happening now. And I began to tell them everything else about their life. Because I don't need to know. I already know you. Why? We operate by different rules. By him all things consist. And we are in him. We are complete in him. Oh boy. Can I share a scripture with you? Colossians chapter 1. Verse 15. Let's go with that. Because I want to get this thing. This next couple of. Um, maybe till the end of October. When we have the meetings. Coming up. You have to, you have to be here. Everybody has to be here. The school of the spirit. I want to teach you some insights into the dimension of the spirit. Do you know when you know how the dimension works. You can sit, sit in your house and sh things can shift. Did you know that? When, when, the, the, uh, when the Syrian general was planning. The king of Syria was actually planning to come and invade Israel. A prophet saw all their moves. In his bedroom chambers the king was plotting. But he sat in his house. He didn't say, oh, let me go to prayer. He was just in the rocking chair. As they're planning, he could hear. Anything that exists responds to the voice of God. Okay, I should stop now. Okay, I'll be nice. Do you know, if all I can do, I can do this and extract all the information about you. I can stand here and I get everything about you. <laughs> I can't tell them what I just got, so I'm going to be nice. Focus. Everybody say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. The key is not getting distracted. Everything consists of Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. I'm going to read right down there. The realms and realities of the new creation. He said, who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things, so all things were created by him. So if you create a thing, you have a right to to code it to do whatever you say. Does that make sense? If I am the creator of the iPad, I put the code to run it. 
Does that make sense? Or whoever I allow to write a code for it. So, because I am the creator, that's my domain. You can never encroach to somebody else's domain until they give you permission. That's why Satan is illegal. He didn't create the world. That's why when you come and he knows you're the right authority, he shifts. No arguments. But if you don't know who you really are, he'll argue with you to find out who you are. Come out, no. Come out, no. What's your name? How many of you in there? 2.5. Come out. No. Fighting with demons. He's sweating too. By the time you've done it. Okay, man. No. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? You lose your voice quickly. You devil of stupidity. We, we have so many names of demons. We, don't even, we have a catalog of all the demons' names. Let's look. You devil of, what's the name of this one? Like a census officer. How many of you are in that house? I don't care. All of you clear out. I'm not a census officer. My job is to clean the house. Move on. Census officers, there's some of them goes, how many of you in there? Praise God. <laughs> what did you say? Isn't that true? How many of you? What's your name? Who sent you? This is Nigeria now. Who be you? <laughs> I saw that video. I rolled. <laughs> These people are fighting with demons. Imaginary demons. <laughs> I've never seen such craziness. The internet is so much fun. How can you be depressed? Just go to the internet, you'll be laughing in a second. Stupidity. Hey. Life is interesting. Am I telling the truth? Have you ever gotten up one morning and start looking that thing? Looking at some of those things? You get up in the morning laughing, you know? You can get something interesting happening to you. You'll be laughing like your neighbors were thinking, what's going on? You spread joy everywhere. Everybody say hallelujah. Okay, let's finish the scripture. I want, I want to get down to something. I want to, I want to get something to you so that you understand where I'm coming from. For he were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Everybody say visible and invisible. So, the the sense realm is the visible realm. The five senses is the visible realm. The invisible realm, they don't know about it. So there are two dimensions of living. The seen and the unseen. Most people don't believe there is the unseen realm. Are you hearing me? Even Christians don't know it. A lot of them don't know it. So what they know is what they see every day. Can you imagine a person starts acting at you and you see the spirit behind him. Instead of dealing with the person, you deal with that spirit. You say, get out. That spirit leaves the person. The person comes back to normal. It's like, what? It's a, it's a dimension of operation. Can I have a big amen? You're no longer looking at people after the flesh. You're looking at them by spirit. Can I have a big amen? I come to some places and I know something is off. And all of a sudden, somebody's eyes rolls. I'm in the store. And the eyes just start rolling. And all of a sudden, they start acting. Everybody in the store is shocked. I'm not shocked. I knew the demons were there. They knew I was there. So I just smiled. I said, don't worry, they're coming out. I said, now, leave that man. That person hit the ground in the store. Why do people are looking at me like this? And they come ask, who are you? I said, you really want to know? Follow me. You got to make them hungry for, who, for what you carry. Are you hearing me? You just demonstrate and they follow you. 
Are you with me? Whether they be thrones or dominion or principalities or power, that means no matter how high the person is, they will be subject to the one who made everything. So that's why when I go to presidents of countries, I don't bow. I honor the offices, but I don't bow. Interestingly, I tell them, get on your knees, I'm going to bless you. Why? It's not me you're bowing to, you're bowing to my king. I come in his name. Because when I speak, you're going to be elevated. Does that make sense? Only the higher ones can bless the lesser ones. Are you hearing me? I know where I come from. Thank God we don't do religion. This is royal protocol. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? So whether it be thrones or dominion or principalities of power, that's the same thing with Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 going down. He was raised far above principalities and powers. And every throne, anything that's named. And you were raised with him, Ephesians 2, 6. Hallelujah. Now, keep putting that scripture. Let's keep going. I want to read that. Because I want to come to a fine point tonight. It was created by him and for him. Everybody say, by him and for him. Next line, let's keep reading. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. That means by him everything has its existence. So that means the cheer can respond. That's why some of you, if you've traveled with me or if you've seen some of our videos, I tell the people, sit on my seat. They sit on my seat and they're healed. Why? The moment I said, sit on that seat and get healed, that seat now is charged with the life of God. Everything consists of him. See, that's a dimension. That's why sometimes I just draw a line. I say, walk across it. They walk across it on their heel. Why? Everything, even the air, is subject to him. But how come we don't, people don't do that all the time? Because they don't know it's there all the time. There are radio signals everywhere. There are pictures all over this place. You don't see it, but bring a television, put an antenna, and have the right frequency. It's always here. Same thing with God. Can somebody say amen? There are radio signals here. Bring a radio here, tune it to the frequency, you hear it. There are things always, they are operating in the invisible dimension. You just have to have the right receiver. Are you hearing me? Same thing with God. Same thing with the new creation. But the problem is, there's nothing wrong with the transmitter. The problem is with the re receptors, the receivers. They have stopped living where they're supposed to live. They've come to the senses because your senses is how your brain gets information. Your brain does not create anything. Your brain cannot create anything. Your brain only collects information from your senses and it gets it from your imagination. And then the brain now uses what's under physical and begins to make things happen. Does that make sense? The information comes from somewhere. The brain now begins to get it from five senses. You begin to draw a plan. Does that make sense? It doesn't come from the brain. It comes from somewhere. Does that make sense? Are you, are you with me? Are you with me? The five senses is what controls people. All things consist by him. Let's keep reading. He is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Keep going. For it pleased the Father that in him shall all fullness dwell. Keep reading. And having made peace through the cross, the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things. Unto himself, by him I say, whether there be things in heaven or on earth, keep reading. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your minds by your wicked works, yet now he has reconciled. Say, I'm reconciled. 
Now, if you go right down, you begin to understand what it says in verse 27. It says, and the hidden mystery, the mystery that was hidden from the foundations of the earth. But now it is revealed, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That was the mystery. All this reconciliation, all the things he's talking about, how he created everything, and then he reconciles you to himself, and now we, he, he, he now reveals that mystery in Christ. And then 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man now be in Christ, you see, all of this thing, the mystery was Christ in you. So now you come into Christ, and Christ comes into you, you are no longer ordinary beings, you are the collection of all that God consists. Does that make sense? The hidden man of the heart. You, you see, the, when the, I taught a whole series about the hidden man of the heart. Some of you remember that, right? The, I taught about the hidden man of the heart. And I said some things here. I'm going to read some things. The Bible says in Proverbs 20, 27. It says, the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. Searching all the inward part of the belly. That means the spirit of a man is God's candle. It knows what is in your belly or in your spirit. Out of your belly, out of your spirit, rivers flow. So the spirit of man, God works with your spirit, not with your mind. So your mind is adjusted by your spirit. God does not work with your mind. Your mind works with your spirit. Your spirit works with God. Does that make sense? So that's why you need to develop spiritual sensitivity. Is this helping you? Is this helping you? The spirit guides your reasoning faculties. Few people know that. Man is a spirit. In other words, you are in the same class as God. You can live independently of the body because you're eternal. That means you can operate, you can stay here and operate there. How do you think God reaches everywhere at the same time? His spirit. There are two kinds of education. You have your spiritual education versus the mind education. A baby grows up, all their learning is purely physical and inquisitive. The mind and the body. Our conscience is the voice of the spirit. Are you hearing me? Reason is the voice of the mind. Feelings, the voice of your body. Does that make sense? If I pinch you, you feel it. If I smack you, you feel it. Why? Feelings. You can feel heat. But then reason is the voice. When you have pain in your body, it's telling you something. It's a voice telling you something is out of place. Somebody has a dislocation and there is pain. Immediately it tells you something is out of its location. Am I telling the truth? It's the voice of the body. That reason is the voice of the mind. You begin to reason about things, but then your conscience is not your reason. Your conscience is what directs you between right and wrong. Is the voice of your spirit. Does that make sense? Is this helping you guys? Now, how do you cultivate all of this? They have what they call the conscience of the believer, two kinds of conscience, and the conscience of, uh, of the natural person. The natural man has what they call science. See, you can develop your natural, the, the human spirit, not the recreated spirit, to become a force. Like calls Christian science, spiritualism, psychological religion. This is the natural, unregenerated human spirit being cultivated. 
the natural human spirit is naturally religious because it is hungry for God. It is the mother of all human religions. But the Christ life is God's answer to that hunger. Religious people are trying. That's why they spend hours praying because they want to get to God. Am I right? Every religious person, whether you're Buddhist, whether they pray, they're devout in what they do. Am I right? There's a hunger in them. But God's answer to that hunger is the life of Jesus. Because when you have that now, you don't, you're no longer are hungry for God. You are satisfied with his fullness. You live it out. I've heard people say, I'm so hungry for God. He said, if you hunger and thirst, you shall be filled. If you've not been filled yet, you're still not very hungry because he will do the feeling. It's such a religious statement. I really want more of God. No, I don't want more of him. The one in me is more than enough. I just need to manifest the one that lives in me. Does that make sense? Such a nice religious cliche. We say, oh, I just want more of you, Jesus. What about Jesus in you? If you want more of Jesus, then you don't have the real Jesus. He has possessed your every being. Do you think you have a drop of Jesus when he came in? Two drops of Jesus. Tup, tup, we're done. Tomorrow come for more. We ran out of drops. I receive of his fullness. Everybody say of his fullness. Have I received? Say grace for grace. Hallelujah. Say I'm loaded with the fullness. Is this helping you? See the spirit man contacts God. Amen. Amen. Demonized spirits. And men that are controlled by demons. I give you these four things and we're done for tonight. The new creation receives the life and nature of God, number one. Number two, the Holy Spirit makes his home in his physical body. And rules over his recreated human spirit. In other words, the Holy Ghost comes to live in your human spirit that is born again. Does that make sense? Number three. This lifestyle is cultured and cultivated through the word of God. Number four. There is no limit to its possibilities. Did I go too fast? Should I, should I do it again? Number one. I'm talking about the realms and reality of the new creation. The new creation has received the life of God and the nature of God has been infused inside of you. Number two. The Holy Spirit makes his home in your physical body. You see, some people think the Holy Ghost comes. Oh, I feel the power of the Holy Spirit. I feel the power. I don't feel the power of the Holy Spirit. He lives in me. I know him all the time. It's kind of interesting when people, did you ever see Jesus said, Holy Spirit come? Holy. No, he was in a constant flow with the Holy Ghost. But we learn from people who watch TV and they start teaching us limitations. Am I telling the truth? Somebody says, oh, I was waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. I thought he lived in you. Can you imagine Jesus said, I'm waiting for the Holy Spirit. That's a strange thought. He never did anything except by the Spirit. Am I right? Why would I be any less? Oh, he's Jesus. Yeah, he's my big brother. Runs in the family. That's how we flow in this family. Amen. Number three, this lifestyle is cultured and is cultivated through the word of God. That means it's not reading scriptures. It's not reading the Bible. It's living in the book. 
A lot of people are reading the book, they're not living. It says, if you abide in my word, if you live in my word, and my word is living in you, ask anything and it's done. If you're not living in the book, you don't ask anything because you don't know what the book is all about. If you abide in me or in my word, one translation says, and my word now abides in you, if you're living in the word, how do you live in the word? See yourself on the pages doing exactly what he did. Capture that picture in your spirit. See, Jesus went about. He just put your name. Divine went about. All of Providence. All of Boston. Put your name in there. Preaching, teaching, and healing. That updates what you're reading. You're living in the word. Can somebody say amen? Does that make sense? You, you go about and you go over there, you fed 5,000, put your name in there. You're living in the book. The book comes alive to you. Does that make sense? That's different from reading a book like this over there, you're over here. If he lives in you, let the one in you do the same thing. He has never changed. But you know, religion doesn't like that. Religion tells you, let's pray some more. We need to go on a 40-day fast. I'll eat and cast out devils. Hallelujah. Amen. People say to me, but don't you fast? Why would I fast? He's here with me. If he's not here, I have to fast. Isn't that what he said? If the, bri if the, bride gr if the, if the groom is with you, you don't fast. But it's not with you, you're going to fast. Have you read that in your Bible? Oh, it's in your Bible. Somebody said, do you, do you fast? Yeah, I fast sometimes. Why do I fast? Just for me. I don't fast to change God. God never changes. When I do that, it's to focus myself. It's not to change God. It's just to make sure I'm focused. I cut away a lot of things. Phone calls, days that. That's fast too. Basically, remove all the distractions. Focus on my mission. Does that make sense? When the crowd is calling, oh, we need you here. I said, no, nope, I'm not coming right now. Take a step back. Amen? Because you can't just be listening to people. You've got to be listening to your mission. Can somebody say amen? Is this helping you? Do you know that when you know those things, even your physical body will change? Are you hearing me? That means your bones, your nerves, your tissue, your senior, all of those things in you, your eyes, your hair, everything will begin to change. Your physical body will stay fresh and people cannot understand how you do it. Are you hearing me? Instead of it dying, it's just gracefully changing from glory to glory. Can somebody say amen? Has this helped you tonight? I've given the four things. There is no limit to its possibilities. Everybody said no limits. Let's stand up, take a moment. We wanted to stir up something in our spirit before we receive the offering. For those of you that are watching us, I want you to do the same thing. Wherever you are, just stand up at home. Just begin to Activate the spirit of God in you. The Bible says, stir up. To stir it up means it's been laying dormant. To stir it up like coffee or tea, you want to stir up what's in the bottom. Stir up everything God has put in you. The gift of God in you. The vision of God in you. Just take a moment and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Colobrone labratos candi libro de iscata labrade. Corre brando saca labrade cos candi libros. Le cabatos canda labradesh. E le cos cambrande libos cate libroso. Corre brande libosa. Le brando se que le brondo lobosa. Que la randoro brose que le brose que le randos. Just take a moment, just stir up that which is in you. You see, you come to the place where your body, your, your, your physical.
physical body is no longer in control. Let the spirit of God in you come alive now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say, Father, thank you for what you've done for me. Say, thank you for giving me Jesus. Say, thank you for the Holy Ghost. Say, my life is yours. And your life is mine. Thank you, Lord, that I am in union with you. We are one now. Say, we are one now. And I have unlimited possibilities thank you lord i am not diminished in anything i do i have unusual favor i have doors open to me i am walking in victory thank you lord i have been victorized Forgiving all your son and leaving your spirit till your works on earth is done. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit to you. Your works on earth is done. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your son. And leave your spirit to your work on earth is done. And leaving your spirit, and leave your spirit to your work on earth is done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you received something tonight? Have you received something tonight? If you have, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Now we're going to do something quickly. We're closing. This is our Bible study. I want you to go back. Read the notes tonight before you sleep. Let it be deeply in your spirit. The Bible says the Bereans, they were very noble people. If they went back to check out whether what Paul said was true. I like this kind of nobility. 
you go back before you sleep just go through your notes because if you don't do that you get so busy tomorrow you forget a lot of things just repetition is the key to retention just go through the notes you can recite it to yourself you become one with it and see what happens and before we go we want to do something we want to give everybody an opportunity to bring your tithes and your offering why is that important it's important because that keeps the mission of the king going it's very important see God cannot do much without human agency with God all things are possible you with God anything is possible so I want to encourage you what you're gonna do is if you're making out a check make it out to KEI for those online you can make it out to Christ Love Media it's fine so make it out to KEI if you're doing uh, we have uh, for those of you here we have Christina's right there you can come in and uh, you can use your card those of you doing the cash app is the dollar sign Charles and Diffin. if you're on PayPal go to paypal.me forward slash Charles and Diffin. and also you can go to the website christlove.org click the donate button and we can do the same can somebody say amen has this helped you has this helped you come on let's clap our hands and praise the Lord amen everybody say hallelujah say hallelujah let the word be richly in you in all wisdom. Amen? Go ahead. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you Only you are my God I will exalt you I will